Hi, this is Professor Nadolkin. Today we will continue talking about electric forces and discuss capacitance and capacitors. Let us begin with some basic definitions. Capacitance measures the ability of a conductor to store charge for a given potential or potential difference. In fact, there is not one but several quantities that can be called capacitance. First, there is a notion called self-capacitance. It applies when only one conducting object is considered. Another property is called mutual capacitance. It is introduced when there are at least two conducting objects. In this case, the combination of several objects can be called a capacitor. Let us first discuss the property called self-capacitance. In this case, we consider one conductor on its own in full isolation from other objects. Self-capacitance measures capacitance of one isolated charge conductor in electrostatic equilibrium. In this case, we place charge Q on the capacitor and wait long enough and, uh, so that the charge is fully distributed on the capacitor. The potential on the capacitor will be uh, constant at any point of the capacitor. Assuming that the potential is equal to zero very far from the object, we uh, can calculate the ratio called C. It is equal to Q, the charge on the capacitor, divided by V. So this quantity is called capacitance. The larger the charge is, the larger the potential on the object will be. In the international system of units that we are using, capacitance is measured in ferrets. One ferret is the capacitance of an object that carries one coulomb of charge when it has the potential of one volt. In other system of units, capacitance is measured in units of length, for example, meters. So this may look surprising, but in fact, it reflects a very important physical reason. It turns out that although we formally write C equals Q over V, capacitance does not depend on either Q or V. If we put more charge Q on the conductor, the potential V on the conductor grows proportionally to Q. When we take the ratio, the dependence on Q cancels in the numerator and denominator. So the resulting ratio, called capacitance, only depends on the geometry, essentially sizes of the conductor. This means that in general, bigger objects tend to have larger capacitances compared to smaller objects. The Earth has a much larger capacitance than a small conducting ball. Therefore, we use grounding to draw uh, the charge from the conducting object into the Earth. Among two conductors of the same shape, but different sizes, the conductor with a larger size will have a larger capacitance. There is another type of capacitance called mutual capacitance. To define mutual capacitance, we need to have at least two conductors. Using two conducting objects, we can build a device called a capacitor. Each constituent object in the capacitor is called a plate. However, the shapes of these objects can be completely arbitrary. When the system of these two objects functions as a capacitor, the charges on the plates have equal magnitude but opposite signs. So the charges are plus Q and minus Q, as shown in this figure. The capacitance of such capacitor is then defined as the ratio of Q divided by delta V. So Q here is the absolute value of charge on either plate Delta V is the potential difference between the plates. Note that the capacitance depends on the potential difference delta V, not the potential V itself. This requires some caution. Some textbooks simplify their notation and use V instead of delta V in the formulas for capacitance. When you see such formulas, you always have to keep in mind that delta V rather than V is assumed. One of the questions on your warm-up asks you about the meaning of the formula for the capacitance. 
if C is equal to Q over delta V. Where is the charge Q on the capacitor? Here is the breakdown of your answers. Most students think that the charge Q is located either between the plates or equal to the sum of charges on both plates. In fact, as you see from the previous discussion, in the most typical situation when capacitors are introduced, charges on the plates are equal in magnitude and opposite in signs. There is no charge at all between the two conducting plates. Inside the conducting plates, charges will move as close to the oppositely charged plate as possible. The correct answer to this question is 1. The charge plus Q that goes into the capacitance is located on the inner surface of the positively charged plate. 